Hi friends, I'm Anna Hellman. Thanks so much for being here today. Today I wanna to share a one of a kind Christmas card with you. That's the type of card that you're gonna to wanna to send to your favorite people. Do, do you happen to send special cards to those people closest to you? If so, this is going to be one of those special cards that you share for those people. Let's take a look at it. What really makes this card one of a kind is we are going to create a Christmas tree for the front of it made out of folded paper. So this card almost takes on a little bit of a 3D effect. To create this 3D Christmas tree, here's what you need. You need squares of paper. So this is actually a great use to use up some of those paper scraps in your collection. You need squares of paper in different sizes. You can try this out in all different sizes, but here are the sizes I decided to use. I have a square that's one and a half inches on each side, one and three quarters inches on each side, two inches on each side, two and a quarter inches, and then two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Now let me share with you what you need to do to each one of those squares to start to create this tree. Now here I'll bring in the paper that I'm actually using for my tree because I have already folded several of these and you may be able to start envisioning how this Christmas tree is going to look when it comes together. So with each of your squares, what you'll do is flip it over so that the side of the paper you want to be out is on the bottom side. Start by folding it, folding, folding the bottom of the paper up to the top until the corners meet and just give that, you can crease this with your bone folder if you want to, but at this point, I don't really think you need to. Open that back up, turn it 90 degrees and do the same thing. So now your score lines will be making a cross on your paper. Now turn one of the points up to the top and you're going to bring the bottom point up to meet it. So now you have a triangle, open that back up, turn it 90 degrees again and do the same thing. Okay, so now you have a lot of score lines on your paper. What you're going to do is hold it so that it looks like a square. And over here on the right side, you want to press the, the lines that are horizontal right now, you wanna press those in and the ones beside them you want to fold out so that this starts to happen. Same thing over here on the left, push the horizontal line in and these other ones you want to keep out. And after you've done that, you're going to have a piece that looks like a triangle, okay? If you need to rewatch that, you can stop and rewind a little bit until you can get that. At this point, I do like to use my bone folder to get this to lay as flat as possible. Now we have this triangle here. There's one more step. You're going to take this top flap because you have two flaps on each side. Take the top one and you want to fold it in so that the edge is going to be straight up and down and line up with that center score line on that top piece. Okay, show this a little bit closer here. And I'll do this other one right here. Uh, so this one right here, we're going to fold that in. I'll try and do this so that it's vertical. Fold this in so that this piece is vertical also. And those two pieces on top line up together. Okay, at this point, I will use my bone folder one more time and get those top pieces to lay down flat. I will mention this, the smaller pieces that you choose to work with, the more difficult it can be to do that folding. Like the smallest piece was a little bit difficult to make all that happen. If you find this too tedious for your taste, Here's what you can do. You can do just large pieces, like you could put three of these on top of each other instead of having five of different sizes, or you can adjust the sizes as needed. So you could use like two of this size and then two of this size. You can do this however you want, but if you have a hard time, definitely go with some of the larger pieces and maybe don't do as many. 
Let's put this Christmas tree together and I'm really excited to show you how we are going to finish this card because I really think it's going to be beautiful when we get done. Now I should line these up in order so that I make sure I get them from smallest to largest. And I'm going to flip this out, flip each one over to the back side, and at the very top corner, pick up a glue dot. I think this is probably the easiest way to put this card together. Now, I am going to lightly adhere these right now. I am not going to push them firmly in place until I get this on my card. And I make sure I like the way it looks because I can make my tree taller or shorter depending on how far I insert these pieces into the next piece higher. So we'll wait a little bit to press everything together really well. Here's a tip. If you decide you like doing these for, for when you're cutting your squares out, it would really would be easy, probably as easy to do several of these as just to do one when it comes to your cutting. Because if you're cutting a strip that's two and a half inches wide, then you could cut that strip into several two and a half inch squares. And then you could do a piece two and a quarter inches wide and cut that into several two and a quarter inch pieces. And once you get done, you may have enough for four or five of these cards. Okay, let me bring in these other pieces here I've prepared. I'll tell you about them quickly. So I have a soft succulent card base. I put a vanilla card mat on top with some of this beautiful brushed metallic cardstock on top. This piece right here, I'm really excited about. This is soft succulent cardstock, and I used a die from this bundle right here. This is the Brightest Glow Bundle. Uh, this is the stamp set I'm using on the greetings. And then these are the dies that I used to cut out all of those holes in the side pieces of this. I am so excited about this die set. I used it on another card the other day. And here you can see that circular die, how it cut out all those holes in a circle. So this time I used the rectangular die, this one, and I cut down the left side and then I ran it through my machine a second time and cut down the right side. Now, after that was done, I used the Merry Melody embossing folder to put that pretty music print on the background. I thought that was a really nice embossing folder for a Christmas card. So now that this is prepared, I will go ahead and put this on. I didn't wanna put it on until I showed you so that you could see, really appreciate all those holes that are cut through the center. Now I'm just using adhesive in the center of here. If you want to, you can place maybe some glue dots or you could use tape at the corners. It may show through just a little bit, but I'm using my Seal Plus, my really strong adhesive. So I'm sure that using this just in the center will work just fine. Okay. Isn't that pretty? And when we add this tree, it is going to be just amazing. So what we're going to do, we're going to add the tree. I have this lovely greeting. I die cut this piece using the same die set and I emboss the greeting with some gold embossing powder. I'm going to put this up at the top corner. We'll put the tree on and then I have this pretty little bow I'm going to add. So I think I am going to stretch this out a little bit more actually and pull these pieces apart just a touch, make it just a little bit taller if my glue dots will cooperate and insert them just barely into that piece, the next piece on top. I'll well, just these two and then I think the other ones may already be good. Okay, I've made my adjustments and I am ready to put this on now. So I am going to use some glue on the back of this. You could use some tape if you have some strong tape like the Seal Plus. But this will give me a little bit of wiggle room if I need to adjust anything. And I'll just have to hold it in place for a few seconds after I put this on till that glue starts to get tacky. 
And I do want to make sure it's fairly straight when I put this on here so I don't have to do too much adjusting. I'm going to put this down a little bit towards the bottom to leave space for my greeting tag up there at the top. So hold this in place for a moment. And I like to multitask, so let's pull the paper backing pieces off of my dimensionals on my tag. I'll mention one little tip here as I am looking at this. Can you see right at the very edge of this piece right here, can you see the backside of that designer paper hanging out? If you find that you have some extra ends hanging out or maybe you didn't get it cut exactly square or maybe you didn't get it folded perfectly, you can just snip those off. And ideally you would probably wanna do it before you put the tree on the card, but I didn't notice it until right now. So that is a way to get those little ends off. Now, when you put your card together, don't lay your card on top of your dimensionals on your greeting tag like I did. We'll put this right here. We'll put our bow on and then I want to add a few embellishments and we will get to see the final result. With all of this gold, I just thought this was so much fun and this is so hard. I think I'm going to put this here, but you can tell me if I should have put my bow somewhere else. It's just so hard to make these decisions sometimes. So these are floral trinkets and they have adhesive on the back side of them. And I decided I wanted to put one of these on. Don't they look like stars? So since I'm going with a gold theme here on this card, I thought that was perfect. And here are some of my pearls. These are called red and green pearls, but they come with silver and gold in them as well. And this is a pack that you really can get a lot of use out of for the holidays and throughout the year. And I'm going to add a few of these all over this tree. So what do you think about it? Give me a comment down at the bottom and let me know. I, it, this makes me want to learn some more paper folding techniques because I just absolutely love this card. So thanks so much for watching along. If you're interested in any of the products I've used, you can take a look at the video description below. I have links to all of them. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.